Hello, um, it's an honor to be here and thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me speak for a few minutes about man versus machine and digital marketing. First things first, who am I? My name is uh, Torkel Öhman, I'm the CTO and co-founder of a company that's called Amanda AI. According to my son who is six years old, I'm the second best grown up in the family, which is Fair enough, I guess. I'm also, as I said, uh, the co-founder of Amanda AI. And Amanda AI is a company that automates digital marketing. We um, currently have support for the Google platform. So Google with its underlying campaign types, uh, Meta and Bing. We're also a part of Microsoft's AI Inner Circle, which we're very proud of. It's a... Uh, program for companies that develop AI technology within their respective category. And there we are the only ad tech company in the world that is in a part of that uh, program. We currently have about 350 uh, customers. Uh, we serve ads in more than 60 markets and those 350 um, um, companies that we help with ads generate about 1,800 accounts, which we manage. And we manage them fully automated. We don't have any uh, SEM specialists or similar who, who optimize them. There's no uh, ad generation, campaign generation, budget management or similar. But don't worry, this isn't a sales pitch. Uh, this is just to give you a bit of a context on who you are listening to. The topic and the theme for today is man versus machine and can you automate digital marketing with help of AI? And uh, it's not only going to be about the channels and the platforms we manage, um, but performance marketing in general. So banners, email marketing, basically all marketing where the goal is to do it data driven and to optimize for an absolute goal, conversions or conversions value or, or similar. There are some people who are going to have specific questions about uh, perhaps Google or Facebook or Bing or AI. Um, happy to, to take them after the presentation. As I said, this is going to be quite general, um, but uh, leave, your, leave your questions in the comment and we will, uh, we will take them after the presentation. So, can you do it? Can you automate digital marketing with the help of AI or with the help of machines? To, I'm obviously quite biased because that's what our company does. But to answer that question, you, you need to break it down into smaller, smaller questions. Um, there are many ways to, to, to do this, but I like to define it into these three questions. One. Are machines intelligent or more intelligent than humans? Uh, two, how do you optimize performance marketing? And by you, I mean you who are sitting in the accounts, uh, adding, removing keywords or your agencies or your consultants that are manually doing this today, choosing products, allocating budget, etc. Um, and is that viable for a machine to do? And then the third question becomes, which is better suited for it, man or machine? Let's, um, let's start with intelligence. This is uh, a bit of a controversial topic. There's a lot of people who think that what they are doing is too complex or too, too contextual or, or too creative or, uh, or similar to, uh, to be taken over or to, or to be done by a machine. But I think that... And there are a lot of different types of intelligence, uh, obviously. But I think that the best way to, to wrap your head around this is to look at one of the most famous examples. Uh, you have Magnus Carlsen, who is the best chess player in the world. Um, and even though he's the best chess player in the world, you have uh, all, you have smartphones, which can beat him every single game. Uh, without uh, without it being uh, too hard and, and uh, you you have been able to do this for quite some time uh, 
um, it was a long time ago that machines uh, beat uh, per people in, in chess. And I think we can all agree that chess requires intelligence. The more intelligent you are, the better your chances of being good at chess are. So I think that we can establish that some types of intelligence um, machines are smarter than humans and quite much smarter. Then the second part of it becomes, would Magnus Carlsen find Google Ads performance too difficult to wrap his head around? Would it be too complex for him to optimize a Google Ads account? Or if we're going to provoke some more, if uh, the persons who are sitting optimizing your accounts today, if they show chess instead of performance marketing, would they excel at chess at the same level as, as Magnus Carlsen? Um, it's a bit provocative. It's, it's made to be provocative, but some intelligence is better suited for, for machines than for humans. So if we know that for some types of intelligence, machines are better suited for it or are more intelligent than humans, then we need to understand what is performance marketing and is it suitable for machines. Um, the buzzword for quite some time has been data-driven marketing, which suits us very well. Nothing is more data-driven than a machine. But what is data-driven marketing? It's basically that you look at historical results, evaluate, draw conclusions and optimize on it. And that is something that is perfectly suited for a machine. Um, we, if we look at banners, for example, uh, on-page banners we can take. Um, if you have a website with a thousand visits every day and you have, let's make an easy example, three banners that are visible above the fold so that everyone who visits the home, the first page of your, of your web page, they see these three banners. If you're telling me that you can choose which three of these banners that are suited for best for all those thousand visits, you're going to have a really hard time convincing me. Uh, everyone is different. Everyone has different preferences. Some people like pink, some people like black, some people like green. If you have a clothing store and you're selling to both male and females, you by definition is going to and have a roughly the same split between the two genders, you're going to show the wrong banner to 50% of your audience all the time. If you have an electronic store and you're, you're showing me Tarkilam on an Apple keyboard, that's not the right choice. That's not the product for me, but perhaps it is the best product for most of the people. So perhaps it's the best product if you have one static banner. But to put the static banner against the dynamic personalized banner, as long as it's built on some sort of historical evidence, some sort of data-driven optimization, that is going to outperform the statical banners every day of the week. Um, that's just the way it is. Then you, could, then you could argue that, but someone sets the models. So someone decides how these algorithms should behave. Someone has built the framework for them to work upon. And there, of course, there, there you have a, a point. Perhaps you think that it should be optimized in another way or you have another philosophy than we at Amanda have. Um, and th that could be the case. But it's still, it's still if you still compare automation versus manual, automation and machine intelligence is going to outperform the manual work if you give them the same framework and the same reference of, uh, of the evaluation. The same thing goes for, for Google Ads, which is one of our big pillars, which we work with. Even on small and medium-sized accounts, you can have thousands, tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands of search queries. All those search queries has a value. They have, have an importance. And you, if you can, you should take a decision on them. Not all of them are worth as much as the other. And to do that manually, um, thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of, uh, of search queries is basically an impossibility. 
if you then have the layer that you have demographics, you have uh, web browser history, you have remarketing lists, um, that you should take a decision on which are more important, which are less important in relationship to each other. That becomes so many variables and so many parameters that it's overwhelming. It's, I would say that it's an impossibility to do. And one thing to, to keep in mind here that is quite important is that when we're talking about automation, at least for Amanda AI, and when I'm talking about the banner personalization I have previous experience with and with the email marketing, it's, it's very important that it's the machines that takes the decision, that it's not a machine that recommends or a machine that works on a framework that you have to put in for each and every campaign or account because that is a big part of the intelligence it's letting machines take the decisions letting the machines evaluate which clicks which user which products should get which budget served where and so on and so forth kind of uh, i think we established that machines on some types of intelligence are more intelligent than people. I think we established that the data-driven optimization is better suited for the machines. And if there's someone who still is uh, on the fence about this or on the edge, um, you can go compete with, uh, with Excel. You can see which one makes the fastest calculations, look up the, the most amount of data in the fastest time and you're going to see that they outperform you. Uh, it's, it's quite simple. But that is also not everything that performance marketing is, obviously. And one question we got with the personalized banners, especially in the emails, was why are you showing this product to me or to this user? Why are you fronting a USB cable on the front page. We know that it doesn't work. Now, machines and humans work in very different ways. And you can't really evaluate the machine in the same way you evaluate the human, at least not on how they're working. On the result, obviously, it's the same KPIs and the arrows should be green and go up if it's a good job. But how they are working is vastly different. You can test a lot more with machines and you need to do it. As humans, we have inherited knowledge about things that are outside of the task that we're doing. So I know that things, I know things that aren't related to performance marketing and they can help me uh, in performance marketing. The machine needs to test. You either need to learn it on historical data and I would say that most, if not all, uh, companies do that when they're working with automation, but you also need to test things to um, to give the machines uh, 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 a chance to learn what is working and what isn't working. You can basically do this comparison between all different things when you put machines into the uh, against uh, humans. Um, if we look at any mechanical development. If we look at a plane, you could have designed a plane that's mirroring a bird, that's flapping its wings. Uh, but instead we have jet engines, it's much more cost efficient and goes faster. It's not fair to compare the two. Um, if you wanted to take the fastest road on ground from point A to point B, you could build something that is bipolar, that, that tries to mimic walking, or you could build a motorcycle. But still, a motorcycle will, will beat Usain Bolt in a race every single day of the week. But Usain Bolt's wife wouldn't want to be married to a motorcycle because Usain Bolt is more than just the task he performs. And I think that if we look to the future of digital marketing, I think that it will be quite more complex quite quickly. Mm, automation optimizes mechanical tasks uh, and what's left is the complexity of it if you today are sitting choosing which product should i have in my in my email which um, which product should i push on my on my front on my hero banner on my website or uh, which keywords should i pause in my google ads accounts those are um, again 
perhaps a bit provocative, but those are quite simple tasks to do. It's quite simple to see if you just look at something quite... Uh, uh, if you just look at something and see this keyword, it has performed better, or this, uh, this, uh, this is our top selling uh, product, I should push it on the, onto the front page. Um, this will be more complex. It will be much more holistic. Uh, you will need to look at how do channels interact? How do I build the best brand? How do I build the best experience? What happens after a click? We have uh, evaluated the thousands of, of accounts and, and the most important factor, much more important than CPCs or prices or click-through rates or quality scores is the brand itself. Uh, and it, it shouldn't be a surprise for anyone. Um, if I open a clothing store tomorrow and I call it Torkel's Kläder and I have the same prerequisites as Salando, I have the same product, the same price, the same click prices, the same quality score. If I'm fronted next to Salando with, with the same product, same price, I get to pay the same everything. Torkel store and Salando, I will lose that auction 99 out of 100 times. And I will do that because the brand has a strength in it. I think that we have been looking kind of lazily on, on more digital marketing uh, the last couple of years. It's been almost as, uh, as free conversions or, or just being present has driven conversions. And that is changing and it's changing quite quickly. What we have today with Google is that we have, we have our digital storefront and sometimes we have our, our physical storefront as well. And the physical storefront, it has a street where it's located on. On that street, you have people passing by. You have people with intents why they're there. Some people are there to visit your store exactly. They, they know that they want to go to your store. Um, some people just are out strolling. They, they're looking for a present or they're looking for the same type of category as you're selling and they walk by your physical storefront. And some people have no interest in doing a transaction or doing a purchase. They're, they're just on their way to work. And it's the same thing with Google. You have your, your street, which is Google, and you have different search queries. Some people are searching for your brand. Some people are searching for something more generic. Some people are just out after information. But it's basically your digital storefront on the street. Um, and the same way we have physical advertisements, you have printouts, you have uh, magazine ads, you have billboards, you now have uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, influencers, etc. Um, but it is not enough just to be present and to be visible. And the most important part is the customer experience and the total customer experience. It's not only about serving a nice ad and serving a a nice product page is about customer support, loyalty. Can we get reoccurring purchases? What is the rate of the reoccurring purchases? How do we? How much does it cost for us to acquire a new customer? How much does it cost for us to get a transaction from an already acquired customer? And how can we switch that percentile so that more people are purchasing without us be needing to pay for the click and so on? So that's the last few words from me. I hope you learned something. I hope I put some thoughts into your head. And if you have any questions, uh, just write them in the chat and uh, have a nice day.